Hi guys, it's Isopa, and this will be a video talking about Expo, or just like sort of how to think about Expo, um, its strengths, its weaknesses, general guidelines for when you should push with Expo, what you're looking for uh, in terms of overextension, um, spelling people out, cycling correctly. Just, you know, I, I want to give you a general guideline for this deck and why. And how it becomes such a force to deal with in the right in the hands of the correct player. So uh, let's. I think we should just start off with you know expo and, and challenges and in and in ladder. Um, obviously for ladder because expo is an epic. It is a lot harder to level up. You usually don't see this type of siege in ladder. You usually see more mortars. Um, I classify RG as siege. A lot of people don't, but see more siege uh because it's easier to level up but in challenges in um when expo is level eight when it's maxed out it becomes really strong you see this at the top of the ladder with um a lot of people finishing the season with it or you just see it in challenges and it's actually pretty pretty strong especially in competitive play uh you have variations on expo where you run fireball uh fireball log or you run rocket log or you just don't run the second spell and instead you take things like an elixir collector elixir collector you see a lot of elixir collector expos but mainly it's for ladder play you don't really see it in competitive play because without the lack of the second spell um games go on for a long time and you lose the ability to spell people out uh personally i prefer this variation that's kind of up on the board it has expo it has a rocket it has the inferno um, general guidelines it has the little mini tank with ice golem sometimes you can replace this with knight <clears throat> i find ice golem a lot better um you know, minions can be like a uh, mega minion here but in general like uh expo will need a mini tank or I, I it doesn't really need it you can also play a variation where you don't use a mini tank and you that's the variation that other people use it's like skeletons like super fast cycle you don't really need a mini tank but i like it better because it makes uh it makes pulling off expo pushes a lot better all right so uh when you're playing expo expo really comes down to the setup like being able to set up um correctly you know like this is uh the bridge two bridges right here um, Expo can only be placed so many places, like if you want to hit this tower over here, it can be placed in the middle, it can be placed a little bit to the left. If you want to hit the tower over here, it can be placed in the middle, a little bit to the right. It can be placed at the bridge. Bridge is kind of a weird placement, an odd placement, but sometimes it's better to do that. Uh, or, you know, um, Expo can just be placed like right in the middle as a defensive Expo to hit things like across the river like that. But it obviously can't hit the crown tower. Um, Expo as like a as a siege as a siege weapon needs to be set up for correctly. Like if you, I when I watch players who don't play Expo very much, they they think that Expo can just be put up on the board and then it'll require like a huge um, commitment to defend. Actually, if if it's just a lone Expo or if it's an Expo without a mini tank or if it's an Expo that is not. Um, that does not have the right cards in order to defend it expo becomes a huge elixir sink and can put you behind setting up your expo is really important then in order to make sure that your expo like locks onto the tower the thing about expo is that it's it's an archetype where if it locks onto the tower that's uh the the rate the high dps or the high rate of fire will just annihilate that tower so it's all about the it's all about the setup and it's all about keeping it alive well, what does the setup look like then? Um, I mean, let's assume that your hand opens up <coughs> and you have Expo in your hand, but you don't have your Ice Golem. You have Expo, you have Rocket, you have Log, you have Ice Spirit. Well, playing Expo without an Ice Golem makes it really hard to get a setup. They, um, your opponent can just drop like a little tank, or they can drop a giant, they can drop whatever, and then the Expo just is, is done. Like you, you have to cycle over again. So when I when I say like set up correctly, I mean you want to be setting up your expo in a um, understanding what your opponent has, so that 
your expo stays up on the board. Uh, let's say throughout a game, you like this is your first expo. You drop your first expo. You drop your ice gold. Right, everything's perfect. Uh, your opponent catches you off, catches you off with an inferno. They play their inferno at the bridge. You're not in time. The inferno takes out the expo, and now you know that in your head. Okay, now they have an expo. Uh, so you just keep going along with the game, and then when you're playing the expo, you want to be countering their counters, sort of like chess. I feel like this matchup is a lot like chess. Uh, now that you know that he has an inferno, you you uh, you drop like, like let's kind of think about it. So we drop expo here. We know that they can drop Inferno. Let's say they can drop Inferno. Well, now that you know that there's an Inferno, you drop Ice Golem on time, and then you kill off the Inferno with a minion. Right? And now when the Inferno is gone, the Expo is the only thing up on the board, and the Expo locks onto the tower, and you pretty much take that tower. Uh, let's say and the game keeps going on, and they, they uh, now they have a Musketeer and an Ice Golem, right? So instead of using the Inferno counter, they drop Ice Golem and Musketeer. Now in your head, you should be saying something along the lines of, okay, if he can play Musketeer, then I want to drop my Ice Golem. The Expo takes out their Ice Golem. The Expo locks onto the Musketeer. I can log everything back. Expo is set up on the board and Expo locks onto the tower. <clears throat> so a lot of Expo is really, you want to set up correctly. You want to track their card cycle. You want to know what probable counters they're going to play with your hand. And then you want to use your cheap cards in order to make up that elixir difference when you put down the expo and counter their counters. Um, you do it correctly, the expo stays up on the board, takes their tower and everything. If, uh, of course, you're going to be running into hard matchups, hard matchups for expo being things like RG. Um, RG really depends if it's ladder play, you can, you can turtle and defend and draw out a game. If it's competitive and the RG is anything competent, then probably the RG just wins. It just it, you, you you have no chance. Um, this is like the, the hardest counter to you. Another hard counter, well, not really hard counter, but hard matchup would be like Giant Lightning or you know like anything Giant, Giant Bowler, Giant Lightning, Giant Graveyard. Um, this matchup you have to go around the Giant. If they play Giant, you know, if they play Giant behind their King Tower like here then you would be setting up your expo over here, right? Um, a, lot, a lot of expo is really about taking your opponent off guard and taking advantage of misplays. If people are playing things like golem and they set a golem back here behind the king tower, you can just set up an expo over here and go ahead and attack. Uh, because this deck is also very cheap, um, if, like, if your expo is not in hand, you can go ahead and cycle to your expo. Uh, and take advantage of people's mistakes that way. Um, good matchups for Expo would probably be along the lines of Zap Bait or Log Bait. Um, Log Bait, uh, the one. Lava, Lava Loon. Lava Loon is really, really bad against Expo. As, as soon as they put down the Lava Hound to start a push, you Expo on the other side and you, you just defend with Inferno Towers and Rockets. Uh, in, in really, really difficult matches where your expo can never get up because they have a ton of cheap units or they have a ton of uh, healthy units, really tanky units, it comes into play with your rocket, with your second spells. You're probably going to have to find yourself in positions where you rocket towers and only towers and you just defend with your expo with your all of your really cheap cycle units. Um, yeah, uh, like opening hands in terms of expo. If we take this kind of deck and we take a look at our opening hands, there's a lot that we can do. Um, so obviously we don't want to be setting up like Expo kind of normally like that. We actually got a pretty bad hand. In a hand like this, we, we'd be wanting to look for rocket value, log value. If nothing happens, then we probably are going to have to just log the tower like that. Oh, uh, he played something. And then we kind of get our cycle going. In a hand like this, you have double spirits. You can just drop fire spirits. You can drop ice spirits at the bridge. You can play ice golem at the back. You can play minions at the back. You can rocket towers, uh, assuming that they play like a um, executioner or, or a musketeer behind the tower. Expo is a really strong archetype, um, and 
you know, if, if, if learned properly, I think that you can take it pretty far. This was a 12 win grand challenge. I played mostly RG to get up here, but I did finish out the 11th and 12th win with Expo. I I would I was going to show this game with the with the Lava Hound, but this I think his deck is just really out there. So I'm gonna show you guys a replay of this Expo against Minor Poison. I think Expo is definitely in favor of Minor Poison, but this guy is able to defend correctly. And the way we win is by out cycle like cycling really really hard on him and forcing all of his pressure to our Expo. So instead of him just minor poisoning us down and down and down again, we're able to keep track of what cards he has in his hand, how he defends with Cannon, how he defends with Musketeer, Ice Golem, and we take the game by letting our, by finally getting one of our Expos connected to the tower. All right, so let's go ahead and watch this game here. So in a hand like this, um, I have minions, I have Ice Golem, I have Rocket. If he plays like a Musketeer by the tower, I will rocket it, but I don't think he does anything here, so I just drop Ice Golem, I believe. <coughs> but I'm always very careful about how to start games now. I don't want to be putting myself into a deficit too quickly. I drop Ice Golem. Plays a Ice Spirit at the bridge. I kind of have to let it go. Drops the Ice Golem. I drop the minions. And this is when he plays his Musketeer. He plays his Musketeer very well here. Instead of playing it back here in order to st uh, start a slow push, knowing that I could spell it out, he instead plays it up front. Uh, like here, like there's no way I can hit a rocket unless I pre-rocket it, and even then it's really risky. <clears throat> so I already immediately know that this guy's a good player. Um, I'm sort of off a little bit, like why he... He could have played his Musketeer one more tile to the right. That way it, it stays behind the Ice Golem and then takes out my Ice Golem. Now the Musketeer goes into the left lane. So that's one his that's like his one little mistake there. Force the cycle. I'm sitting a 10 elixir because nothing in my hand is very good in order to take out this musky. So I have to wait for it to cross the bridge. He miners here. Uh I log out the Minor. I'm already taking a ton of damage. I see Minor. I see Ice Golem. I'm assuming that it's like uh, Minor Poison now that I've seen a lot of these cycle cards here. I dropped the Ice Golem. I don't really want to be setting up my Expo unless I have the correct setup like we talked about before. I want an Ice Golem in front of it. I want uh, counters to be... I want to know what counters he's going to be able to put down in order to counter his counter. I drop the minions here. Now I set up the expo and see how he defends. He poisons everything, which is really good. Sets up the cannon. And I log everything. Even though I probably should not have logged there. I think the log was really wasted. <laughs> I know it's minor poison now. He sends out the miner and the ice, um, ice spirit. I don't want to tank that ice spirit. So I use the ice golem. Ice Golem is going to walk into lane. Obviously, I can't play Expo because of the, this isn't going to be staying up. So I, I let it go. I don't play Expo into this. I have a feeling that if I did set up Expo here, it would just get countered. Now I'm looking to cycle my cards in order to get back into a better rotation. And defend his minor poisons. I drop Expo into the right lane. He drops his Musketeer in the left lane. I know he has a cannon. I can't really do anything about the cannon. So we're able to take out all of this, but our expo doesn't get up. His musketeer comes down. I'm able to catch the musky, but this miner is getting a ton of damage on me right now. This is not a good place to be in right now. And I take two, yeah, two about two more hits. Uh, luckily, his musketeer gets locked on, but this cannon is already locked into my expo, so he takes out again. This is a really, really good defense from the minor poison player. In general, Expo versus Minor Poison favors Expo. Um, minor Poison, the reason why Minor Poison is really difficult is because uh, if, if, I'm in the, if I'm in the correct place and I set up my Expo right and he is even one second late with his defense, my Expo breaks through and, and Minor Poison can't come back. But instead, he's finding ways to pressure me 
um, on this tower, on this left tower. And at the same time, is defending me well with cannons, with uh, Musketeer and Ice Golden. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to force him to only look at the right lane with my Expo. And, and I'm trying to really anticipate what cards he's going to have. Whether he's going to play Musketeer. If it's a Musketeer, I need to log it right away. If it's a Cannon, to have Ice Golem out in order to kill out the Cannon. And to have um, Fire Spirits and everything ready for his Miners. And to not play into his Poisons. I need to be able to defend this left side too. So I see now he's a... Uh, I'm, I'm forcing him to look toward my way. The Muskie unfortunately locks on to the Expo. And then re-locks on even though I... Send out the log, so it's unfortunate. I have another expo coming right up. He decides to send his monitor to the right side. I'm able to kill it off with the fire spirits. I need to preserve as much health on my tower as possible because it is minor poison. Um, minor poison really depends on every single chip damage as, as much as possible. So I need to be cognizant of the left side and also be pressuring him on this right side as every single moment I have. He drops the Ice Golem. This is a mistake. He drops his Ice Golem. Uh, the range of Expo kind of goes like this. So it's outside of the range of this um, Ice Golem. He was thinking that he would drop it here and then the Ice Golem, like, if my Expo gets set up, the Expo would lock onto this and buy him a lot of time, but unfortunately it doesn't. This push is actually kind of, it's actually pretty scary because if the tower locks onto the Ice Golem, the skeletons lock onto my tower. And take out my tower. So I, even though I dearly, dearly want to log this, I I'm forced to log on the left side to take out the skull. The expo gets set up. He's forced to poison on it. He sets up on a cannon too, <clears throat> and he's feeling really uncomfortable right now because he, he knows that I have the elixir lead. There's like a minor, um, a minor log that's really good. I'm getting set up on my expo again. Now he's in a really tough position. The expo is hitting the. You know, I'm uh, I'm using I'm using the ice golem really well. The expo finally locks onto the tower, and now he has nothing. He's down on elixir um, after attacking left side so many times. Expo locks on. I'm able to just sit back and then rocket for to finish out the game. Well, I mean that. Ice Golem team. That's that was our twelfth win right there. He played very well. Um, so if we remember, <laughs> we're like tracking what he what he uh what he can use on defense. We're remembering that he he can use Ice Golem, Musketeer. That's one defense. He can use Ice Golem Cannon. One defense. He can use Miner and like Skeletons. Another defense. He can use Poison. Um, so. For each one that we see, like he can't do all of it. He can't just drop cannon with a musky with an ice golem. It's a lot because if he does that, then he can't attack our left side. If he um, just puts uh, one defense, then we can uh, optimally just defend that one defense and then get our expo set up. Our attack is so much more scary than his. Like if we think about it, minor poison is damage over time and we'll have to defend you over and over and over again. Expo just needs to get that one lock on. We only got one lock on, but that one lock on won us the game. So if we just keep pressuring him, he he knows that if he makes one mistake, that's game. Okay. Go ahead and open this. See what we get here. I'm hoping for prayers that I need like this. I can finally level up Elixir Collector to level eleven actually really good getting a lot of battle rams lately giants goblin gangs and executioners okay well uh thank you guys for watching if you have any questions on expo um definitely leave it in the comments below i know this was a really vocal guide it, i you didn't get to really see me play expo but uh, if, if you guys want to see it more, I might just do a you know grand challenge run with Expo, even through all of like really bad matchups. Thing about Expo is that if you do reach an RG on grand challenge, you probably just lose. If you meet Giant Graveyard, it's a really difficult matchup and it becomes really sloppy. But you know, I I, I have definitely done 
multiple grand challenge runs with expo and i find that it's super versatile uh, uh you know inside those matchups and outside those matchups <clears throat> so there's definitely a lot of room here uh i was going to do uh just like a siege a siege just entire guide you know like with mortar with this with rg rg i know a lot of people don't think rg is siege but i consider it siege um instead i just decided to break it down into just one in each i might just do a, a ne the next one on mortar but um <clears throat> i've been really enjoying expo definitely something that is uh it's definitely not underrated in this meta i think a lot of people are definitely using it a lot um and if you really get good at this kind of style what it teaches you is uh tracking cards tracking cards you you definitely need to track cards in order to counter things correctly and about just hitting timing attacks if you can hit those timing attacks where expo is super strong you just take a tower immediately and then because it's such a defensive deck also um you can almost defend anything uh per that you set up your defenses correctly okay i think that's uh it for me comment like subscribe below thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys next time